Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we'll be making the Blanca coaster. It is made with all single crochets placed into clusters. It measures four by four inches and it looks great in any color. These are made in a cozy wool yarn, but you can use what you have on hand. And if you are using cotton yarn, look in the description box below for a quick note and to also get the free pattern link. I think these coasters would make a great gift paired with a really fun mug. Today I'll be using one of my favorite wool yarns, the Petite Wool by We Are Knitters. It's super soft and easy to work with. You'll also want to grab a few different hooks. You'll want an H hook and an I hook. And then if you are a tight crocheter like me, you can use a J hook for the slip stitches instead of the I hook. It might just be a little bit easier when making those slip stitches. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, and a measuring tape if you are going to block the coaster, and also grab a yarn needle for weaving in the ends. Grab your H hook and your yarn. We'll start out by making a slip knot and chaining 15. To make a slip knot, wrap your yarn around two fingers, push the back piece to the front, and pull up on that piece. You can adjust your loop by pulling on your tail. Place your hook inside the loop and tighten it, and then we're gonna start by chaining 15. Once you have 15 chains, we're gonna start by making a single crochet in the second back bump from the hook. We're gonna place a single crochet in the second back bump from the hook. Then we're gonna skip the next back bump. And then we're gonna place three single crochets into the next back bump. So we have single crochet in one, two, and three. From here, we're gonna skip the next two. So one, two. We're gonna place three single crochet into the next back bump. So we have one, two, and three. We're gonna skip the next two. We're gonna put three single crochet into the next back bump. Two, three. We're going to skip the next two again and we're going to put three single crochet into that next back bump. So we have one, two, and three. And then we're going to have two left. We're going to skip the next and we're going to place one single crochet into the last back bump of the row. We just finished with row one. We're going to turn our work. We're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna make one single crochet into that first stitch. So the first stitch here, make one single crochet. We're gonna skip the first stitch, and we're gonna place three single crochet into that next stitch. So this is one, two, and three. Now we're gonna skip the next two stitches, and then we're gonna place three single crochet into that next stitch. So single crochet one, two, and three. We are gonna skip the next two stitches. One, two, and we're gonna go make three single crochet into that third stitch. One, two, and three. Then we're gonna skip two, put three in the next stitch. One, two, and three, and then when you have two left, you're gonna skip one and make one single crochet into that last stitch. So this is the end of row two. From here, we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna place one single crochet into our first stitch. We're gonna skip our next stitch and place three single crochet into that next stitch. One, two, and fighting with my yarn three single crochet. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches and make a three single crochet into that next stitch. And you'll see the pattern. We're going to skip two, place three single crochet, and you're going to keep skipping two until your last two stitches. And that's when you will skip one and place a single crochet into your last stitch. 
So here we're placing three. We're on our last two stitches, so we're going to skip one and place one single crochet into the last stitch. You're going to continue doing that all the way to row 11. Just continue that pattern and we will meet back. We just finished row 1 through 11. It can be a little tough to count these rows, but just so you know, you are finishing on the same side as your tail. From here, we're going to move on to do our slip stitches. If you're a tight crocheter, you can move up to a J hook. And if you are more of a loose crocheter, go ahead and grab that I hook. I do like to put a stitch marker in my last stitch and that's just my preference. From here, we are going to slip stitch into the next 10 stitches. So you can place your hook back in and turn your work slightly. I wanna show you here how to find these 10 stitches because this kind of looks just a little crazy. So here we're going to skip, skip these two lines and then facing you is the V stitch. So we're going to go under two loops. Then you're going to move over and find these two loops. Then you'll see another two loops kind of facing towards you and then two that are a little straighter. So we're going to go across grabbing each of those stitches. So first we're going to go under two of the loops here. We're going to make our first slip stitch. That's one. Just going underneath two loops. We're going to do our next slip stitch, two. This is three. Four. five, six, this one's facing us, seven, this one is straight, eight, this one's facing us and it looks a little bit tight so don't skip that one, that's nine, and then our last one will be straight. So that is our 10th slip stitch. Slightly turning your work, we're going to slip stitch across in the next 14 stitches. These V stitches are a lot easier to see. I personally like to go under the two loops only, but it can be a struggle to get underneath them as you continue down the row. So I'm going to show you a, an alternative way that you can do if you can't get under those two loops. So here we're going to start by making a slip stitch in the first stitch and if you're unable to get underneath both loops of the next one there will be a chain space there that you can just make your slip stitch into. That third stitch you should be able to get underneath both loops and then in the next one you can place two slip stitches in that big chain space and then you should be able to get underneath the next stitch. If you're unable to get underneath the stitches, just make sure that you place the slip stitches in the chain space. Usually you will place two, and then you can get your hook underneath the next one. Going all the way across, making sure that in the end you have 14 slip stitches. So here we're done with one side. I don't particularly love doing it in the chain space, because it doesn't look as neat to me, but if you are gonna block your coaster, you can um, straighten them out in the end. Moving on to the other side, these are the stitches that look a little funny once again, so I'm gonna point them out to you here. We're gonna skip this little bit here, and we're gonna go underneath both loops of this stitch that's straight on. Then we're gonna turn our work a little bit away from us, and you'll notice that there's a stitch on its side. Then there'll be one that's straight and then turned away from us there'll be another two loops a stitch on its side so we're going to grab 10 of these stitches all the way across this is one two three and the one stitches that are away from you are a little tough to see but just turn your work 
So keep slip stitching across until you have 10 total. Okay, so we're heading towards the end. I'm sorry I'm cut off a little bit. I'm just trying to get into this last stitch here. And now we're going to be turning our work once again, and that stitch on the end can kind of disappear. So you want to make sure that you have 14 stitches. And we are just going to slip stitch across. This is probably the easiest row yet. It's our last row. So just place a stip slip stitch into each stitch until you get to your stitch marker. That is your last stitch. That's why I place it there just to make sure that I've hit every side and every stitch that I need to. So placing one into our last stitch and we can take out our stitch marker and then leave a long tail and cut that piece. We're gonna do a seamless join. So what we're gonna do is instead of fastening off, we're just gonna pull that yarn straight out, grab your yarn needle, thread your yarn through, and then you're gonna find the stitch to the left of your last stitch. So this is it here. We're gonna place our yarn needle through that stitch, and then we're gonna go back to the last stitch that we made, and we're gonna go straight down the middle in between the front and the back loop and pull that through. And that will give us a seamless join. It makes a faux stitch. From here, just weave in all your ends and block your piece if you'd like and enjoy your Blanca coaster. Thanks so much for joining me. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and also subscribe to my channel as I'll be having new crochet tutorial and crochet alongs in the near future. Also, if you're looking for some free crochet patterns, go to yarnsociety.com.